there's an invention today. I'm wondering if you're impressed. Or, you know, when I watch Shark Tank, and I do still. Still. Pretty often. Are yeah. they producing new episodes, or are you yeah. just in the rerun world? I watch a lot of reruns because I haven't seen them all. Uh, but they still do live episodes, new episodes every week. Does the does the panel change? A little, but the, the the ones that always stay are Mark Cuban, who's he's leaving after this season. He made that announcement. But Mark Cuban is almost always there. There's a guy named Kevin O'Leary who's almost always there. Uh, the guy, oh, I forget his name, but he invented For Us, By Us, Fubu. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's great. Uh, God, I forget his name. And then Barbara Corcoran's usually there. And she's then they the have, uh, little blonde firecracker? Mm-hmm. No, no. The, the, she's the older real real estate lady. Short the, hair. She's on the Today Show sometimes. Yeah, uh, I, I, th- I think I've seen her. Yeah, yeah you know her. The little blonde firecracker, she's great, oh, too. Oh, there's another? Yeah. Oh. And she's on a lot. She's on yeah. almost every week also. I saw, a, I guess it would be a TikTok video. It was one of these, like, uh, they start with somebody's net worth when they're real mm-hmm. low and it goes up. Yeah. And um, I've seen these around. But I guess the, and you may have seen the episode, the little sponges that smile, have a smiley that's, face. That's the big one. It's called the Scrub Daddy. Yes, the Scrub Daddy. I didn't know that was a Shark Tank thing. And I guess most of them had turned them down except for the one lady. And she said, yep. yeah, I mean, in fact, one guy was like, this is a horrible idea. This is stupid. The Scrub Daddy is, I don't know what makes it so special. It's a sponge. And I believe. Like a standard kitchen sponge? I've seen it. It's got two sides to it, doesn't it? It's yeah. one soft and one's, and got one's a, more yeah, like course. for scrubbing. And, and it's got a little smiley face on it. And it might be that you can hook water into it and constantly keep it soapy. But uh, that, or you can put your fingers in it. In and, it, yeah. Everybody so, turned it down except I think it's the blonde firecracker. Mm-hmm. I forget her name. She's so great. Can I too. type that into Google and it'll... if you if you um, Google blonde firecracker shark. Tank blonde woman, you're gonna find her. The only billionaire on there is Mark Cuban, but everybody turned down the scrub daddy except for her, and uh, she sold it on um, Lori Griner. Lori, that's who it is, Lori, mm. and she sold it on QVC, which she's got a real in at QVC, and it's made millions. I mean, it has made yeah, huge it, money. It, it's shocking how much his net worth is like well over a hundred million now. I, I think. is it a better sponge? Because I, yeah. I, hate, I mean, I don't do a lot of KP in the in the Dem household, mm. but. We they've had sponges with two sides for. I don't ages. know what makes it special, but it was a. They loved it's got it. The smiley face. It, it's whatever made it special. Mm. It sold like hotcakes, and now I see it on end caps sometimes in mm. Lowe's or Home Depot, and that's the biggest thing to come off that show. You it think? is. It is. Yeah, I think that's the best one that came off of there so Which, far. Was the the ring doorbell on there? I want to I say it was, a, ring was, it was, it was but there. they turned it away. They oh, turned it okay. down. Okay, and it still made money. A lot of guys go on there. And they'll basically just advertise their product. And even if they don't get a deal, their sales go up because it's been on Shark Tank. Exposure. You know, you get mm. a lot of exposure. Uh, Myrtle Beach, Doug, you're talking about the Scrub Daddy and what makes it good. Go ahead, sir. Uh, hey, guys. Myrtle Beach, Doug here, of course. Yes. Uh, yeah, the Scrub Daddy is pretty darn awesome. Um, my folks, uh, my, my wife's folks, they do like the vacation club things uh-huh. and every resort they have has the scrub daddy in it. It's got the soft side. It's got the bristly side and it does in fact have a little bit of cleaner in it. So, I mean, it works great on the pots and pans. I mean, you know, even if you've got to clean out your bowl, it'll work on that too. You know, mm-hmm. great, okay. great. Product. All right. And yeah. yeah, we did see it on shark tank too. So, uh, that's right. uh, kind of amazing, yeah. Uh, I, the little bit of cleaner inside it is a big deal, and they the does it one, run out? I, yeah, I mean, I think nothing's you, infinite. You have to buy a new one. You have to buy new ones. I, you know, I didn't see that particular episode, but they flash back to it a lot. Hmm. And she, Lori, is the one. I think one other was interested, but dropped out. It's the guy who started Fubu dropped out, hmm. and she got it, and it has been huge. It's their biggest deal. That's, yeah, that's that the biggest wild. one. Yeah, and 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 then another one came along. Thank you, Myrtle Beach, Doug. I saw a. a what do you a, use to clean out your bowl? Your bowl. I just. I'm not. I don't. There's no. <laughs> don't don't answer that. I'm not going to answer that question. I'm not going to answer that question. We know you're off already. Okay, okay. I'm off. <laughs> there was another sponge that came on there specifically, like you hooked it to the garden hose and cleaned your car mm-hmm. with it. But they compared it to the Scrub Daddy, and they yelled at that guy. They were like, how dare you come on here and try to copy Scrub Daddy? And the logo looked very similar. Denied. And they said, you're, you're, That's not nice. you're infringing on Scrub Daddy. They do that a lot, where they're, um, they'll yell at Judgy. some people. Yeah, oh, yeah, they'll yell at you. I mean, they call it the Shark Tank because, and I think the people are out there, they show you about 10 minutes, but the people are out there like 45, and they mm. just get nailed sometimes. You, know, yeah. you never know how it's going to go. 
And they have to create that drama, of course. Um, one guy t- sold some uh, make-it-yourself chicken coops one time, and they just bawled him out mm. because one of the, the sharks dropped out. His name was Robert, and he really wanted to deal with Robert, but he had already dropped out. And so later, Kevin had offered a deal, and the guy said, I'd really love to get Robert back in. And Kevin was like, don't you ever insult me like that. <laughs> and he just said, forget it. You know, <laughs> Here's the whole reason I brought up Shark Tank. There's a product. He's trying to get on Shark Tank. He's made it to the finals to get on three times, but he's never made it on the show. But I'm not sure. A lot of times on that show, they'll say, you've solved a problem that's not really a problem. So we don't need this product is not necessary. And I'm not sure if this is a necessary product. This guy named Chris Rondazzo has invented it. He's taken 10 years to do it. In 2014, his wife had been diagnosed with cervical cancer. And she survived it now. That was uh, 10 years ago. But to get their mind off of it, they went to a movie. And at the movie theater, he wanted to be able to put his arm around his wife to comfort her because she had just had this terrible diagnosis the day before. But he couldn't balance the popcorn bucket on his lap while he was putting his arm around her. He's got. There's, I'm sorry, it's a very poignant story. <laughs> so Chris Randazzo said, "There's got to be a way for me to balance this popcorn bucket and put my arm around my wife at the movie theater." And then he had the idea, and he says this will work for movie theaters, ballparks, wherever. He went home, he sawed a, he t- took a cup and cut it in half, like a styrofoam cup, stuck it on the bottom of a popcorn bucket, and now it fits into the cup holder. Mm. So the cup holder holds your popcorn bucket. And he went to a lawyer, and the lawyer said, I think you've got something here. They did some research and found there's no other thing like it. So now over 10 years, he's developed this product. Now, right in the middle of it, he had COVID and almost went broke because the people that were manufacturing it for him went out of business. Mm. So he moved from the Midwest out to Mesa, Arizona, and he contacted a company called Pacific Plastic Technology, and they make 70 a day for him. Does it have a catchy name, Kelly? Excuse me, 70 an hour. It's oh, called, an hour, it's okay. called <laughs> Hands-Free Popcorn Bucket. That's right at it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's catchy enough to kind of really oh, it, grab. It says everything. If you go to handsfreepopcornbucket.com, you can see it. But now it's an all-plastic thing, and he is in negotiation with AMC Theater. There you go. And Regal Theater to try to provide these popcorn buckets. But so far, he hasn't gotten anywhere with them. You know, now, I mean, a lot of the theaters, they they, they have those reclining chairs. Mm-hmm. And the, the the cup holders are enormous. Yes. Yes. They're, they're very they're, it's not like your standard cup single arm mm. cup holder anymore. Well, because there are monster cups you get there when you buy a drink. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking at this thing and this is a monster bucket. It is. Okay. Yeah. And it's got a but it fits you into put a tapered bottom. It, yep. Yes, it's a very small bottom, that but you still get a big bucket of popcorn. Right. So, but it looks, I mean, it's like the Stanley, Stanley cup. Tumbler. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly like the Stanley Tumbler. It holds a lot but small bottom. Correct. I yeah. like big bottoms. Well, <laughs> you cannot lie. So my question is, is it really an issue? I mean, do we really, uh, are people clamoring for a popcorn bucket that fits into a cup holder? And I just don't know that that's the case. I'll tell you, I think it'd be something that people would buy because it's there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't make it plastic. No. I'd make it paper. Well, maybe so there, to, maybe uh, it is paper. People try to keep a plastic one. That's bis- this is a. I don't think individuals buy these. I think this. He's going right by going business to yeah. business. No question. Yeah. He has. He's. He sells them online for eighteen dollars per popcorn bucket. But I don't think there's any need to have them unless you're in the theater or the baseball stadium. And you're not going to take it with you. No. And I think yeah, make them paper and let Regal Cinema or AMC or the baseball Major League Baseball and football because you can put it there now. You know, in your You'd have to mass it. produce them so that they could have enough yeah. in every theater. That's why I'd say if I was AMC. I'd buy them and sell them for two dollars more than a regular bucket. I don't even know if you need to sell them for more than a bucket, and they're all, would, if they're paper. I would, but to me, it's gimmicky. That's why I'd sell it for. But more. I, but I'm saying there's no need to even. I mean, that just becomes the popcorn bucket. Yeah, that you have to make it. People aren't going to pay extra for right it in it the just, theater. That's They've the popcorn been, bucket. Now it fits in your cup holder. That's you know? right. You, you can quietly take it up a dollar if your, you wanted your popcorn to. Popcorn price. Yeah, if you wanted to. My only thing would be how stable is it. Mm-hmm. He says he's got it worked to where it's real stable. That's Chris Rendonzo, mm-hmm. and it took him 10 years to get it just right. But here, my thing is, I don't think it's a problem. I don't think people mind yeah. holding the popcorn you know, or putting it between no, you're the you're not two. in there for more than three hours. Yeah, and remember, Heidi Klum told us. But you do have to hold it. You do. You do. I mean, and other, otherwise, then you're putting it on the floor when you're done or whatever. Yeah, yeah so, but, so do you think that it is then? An, I'm, a not, need. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna close the door like all the other sharks. I wouldn't close the door. Would you give it a deal? Would you if you were on Shark Tank, would you 
invest in this company because that's what he's going to want. I'd like I like to hear more feedback from our friends in the uh, the movie business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pict in the pictures. Yeah. So, but what what will happen is if he were to ever make it on Shark Tank, Mark Cuban would say, "I have connection to AMC Theater." I'm going to invest with yeah. you, and then he, they'll listen to him. Do you think popcorn is still the number one snack at a theater? At a theater, you know, a multiplex. <sighs> I think so. Do you? Yeah, I think so. Over candy, I think candy. I think it's secondary. Yeah. I always buy candy. Yeah, I always go play. Now, well, you're sweet too. Yeah, plant, I mean, yeah. I, I've I've eaten my share of popcorn, mm -hmm. but it's as you know, it's not my favorite not vegetable. Favorite. I'm plain M and M. Yeah. What this what this popcorn bucket has to do is take over wherever they get their popcorn buckets from now. Right. These theaters. Right. He's got to take that over and say, I don't know. It's a better popcorn. Let's say it's bucket. Dixie Cup that makes yeah. the the buckets. Yeah. You got to. You got to put them out of business. And get. You're gonna and put you, Dixie Cup out of business. Well, at least the popcorn division. Or get into. <laughs> You just got to get in those theaters. But a shark would help him. Now, that would really no, but help. But you can't have competing buckets. No. It's got to be the bucket. The bucket. Justin, you're talking about popcorn buckets. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, how annoying would it be if you're in, like, a huge opening, like, for the Avengers or something, and the theater's packed, and you got the person next to you with the big bucket in the cup holder, and they're just constantly reaching over back and forth? That's the thing, too. I mean, plus, you want it for your drink. You know, you're going to have a drink also. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you, I mean, you do have two cup holders, but you share. That aisle is shared. So would you rather hold your drink or your popcorn? You know, that's sort of the choice you, you have to the, make. You hold the snack. Right. Because it's more passable, too. Right. Chances are. There's no, there's not two on each side, but and I know it goes to the other person, but there's one on the aisle. Mm -hmm. I but guess. The person on the aisle gets two. Yeah. Right? I guess. Yeah, but most of the theaters now, they have the, the you have your own recliner. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. But do and you share the, an armrest with somebody next to you? Uh -uh. It's yours only. Yeah, they're, they're five feet away from And you me. have two cup holders. Because you'd have one you on each arm. Space. Yeah, you would. We have a big, fat one on one side. Okay. I think there's room for this. Robert, you're talking about the popcorn bucket. Go ahead. Yeah, I found one way to poke a hole in the the inventor's situation. Uh, all she has to do is hold the popcorn bucket, and then, uh, then problem solved. He could have put his arm around her <laughs> had she been holding the popcorn bucket. But mm. she was. he was trying to come. He poked her. a hole in the bucket. That's the whole thing, too. You can't do that trick, then, where you put your member up through the bottom yeah, of the Yeah, there's been right. hands-free popcorn since the 1950s. Right? Well, you know, that's right. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble if you poke a hole in that and try it. And you can't you do know, it. You if it's in the cup holder, hand it to me. No. You can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. It's like uh, Heidi Klum told that story the recently. cringe story. She told her, the, her most cringy story. What is the most cringe thing a guy has ever done to get your attention? Mm, they put their wiener in the popcorn box. <laughs> They hold a popcorn box and you just keep eating and all of a sudden I was like, yes, there was more in the popcorn box as it was sitting on his lap. Dug a hole in the bottom, <sighs> shoved his little wiener sausage through it and as I'm munching down, yes. Okay. His and she wiener sausage. She laughed at it later. She, she was cool with it. She was cool with it. She was like, all right, yeah. I see what you're doing here, but yeah. it didn't lead to anything. We have Jacqueline talking about the hands-free popcorn bucket, handsfreepopcornbucket.com. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, so I think that it would be a great idea for people that go to the movie theater with their kids because they always spill the popcorn. No matter what you do, no matter how they try to hold it, mm -hmm. it's always on the floor if you have kids. And putting it in the cup holder would help alleviate that problem at least. That's true. That's a good angle. That's a very good point. At a Disney movie with five-year-olds, you put it in the cup holder and then they just reach in and get it instead of trying to hold it. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see this guy on Shark Tank and see if he can make it make a go of it. I'll be watching.